थैंक यू मुकेश कुमार जी थैंक यू मिस्टर वरुण माय कलीग्स दिस टॉपिक ऑफ कोल गेसिफिकेशन इन दिस कंट्री वी हैव बीन डिस्कसिंग सिंस 2005 गवर्नमेंट टुक ए वेरी प्रेगमेटिक व्यू एंड दे प्रमोटेड सीबीएम कोल बेड मीथेन कोल गेसिफिकेशन अंडरग्राउंड कोल गेसिफिकेशन एंड also the small gasifiers for the day to day uses so we have to understand two things into it one is gas as a substitute to natural gas the other is gas to be utilized to produce power or to feed to the reheating furnaces or for the other heating applications for example there are so many ceramic industries in the country vitrified tiles they are making there are so many furnaces for the potteries all these furnaces they do need gas so this gas is available with two routes one is natural gas the other could be gasification through the liquid fuel to gas and the third is coal to gas so this gas is normally 1200 kcal to 1500 kcal per annum q this is a lean gas similarly the gas required to produce power through the generator turbine route that there we need from 1500 to 2000 kcal per nm cube of the calorific value that is the second stage of gasification the third stage is how to make this syn gas that is synthesis gas the synthesis gas is about 3500 nm cube per uh, 3500 kcal per nm cube the synthesis gas has all those basic characteristics of the natural gas so when we use natural gas to produce steel through dri route at that time what we do we reform the gas and we bring it down to 3500 or 3700 kcal per nm cube by virtue of the coal gasification technology with addition of oxygen and steam we make from coal to gas which produces 3500 3700 kcal per nm cube so it is like a reformed natural gas this gas is utilized to reduce uh, to uh, to reduce uh, iron and specially to produce pig iron, sorry uh, sponge iron or dri so this dri is used to produce steel through the electric arc furnace route or through induction furnaces route the dri is also a good coolant for the blast furnaces through bof route so it also replaces this scrap if somebody wants to use dri through bof shops that is converter shop so there is various uses so it is a very wonderful gas and wonderful technology for the steel industry for the power sector and also for the reheating furnaces for various plants now what mukesh kumar ji told very rightly do we have the facilities yes there are for example gale in jharkhand is getting cbm coal bed methane and they are injecting in their own pipeline mixing with the natural gas and supplying to the people this is the the technology is already available process is already available mixing with natural gas the cbm that is also available now point is how to commercialize it in jindal steel and power we put up the first mega gasification plant in angul based on the local coal available in talchar area talchar ramchandi area unfortunately the coal blocks were cancelled but we had put up the plant now this plant is already there we are running this plant either sometimes the imported coal or mixed with the domestic and imported coal mixed together because the coal in plenty is not available from the vicinity of the area whereas we are sitting on 80 billion ton coal under the bed in 40 kilometers of the total periphery so this is the first plant which came in the country 
But prior to this plant, in 1975, with the Cooper's technology, Government of India brought a plant for Rastriya Chemical Fertilizers in Talchar. So Talchar fertilizer plant was based on coal gasification. It came in 1975 and it was abandoned in 1999. It has given its 24, 25 years of life and after that the fertilizer plant in Talchar was stopped. Again now, after seeing that the gasification with a mega scale, with a different route and for the highest coal is successful in JSPL, Government of India has now come up with another gasification plant for Talchar again in the same location to produce fertilizer. So, you know, this gasification is having vivid, uh, vivid uses. One is, we can produce power, we can provide to reheating furnaces, we can provide this gas for, even for cooking. This gas can also be utilized for making fertilizer. This can be used to produce steel. This ga gas can be used to produce hydrogen. This, the hand hydrogen is going to be the tomorrow's fuel in most of the cases. So the gas has various uses. Now, many of the people, they have always doubt that coal gasification means a lot of pollution. But I will tell you, if you, anyone of, out, out of you want to visit our gasifier, you please you can visit. The pollution is within the very much st stringent norms of international standards. So whatever pollution we say, whatever socks, knocks, whatever we say, that is well within the limits specified by any of the international standards, even in Europe, America, Japan, Korea, whichever the good economies they are concerned about the, uh, about the environment, we are rated one of the best out of them. As far as the SOX, NOX, SOT, whatever the, uh, whatever the uh, uh, we say that these are the gases coming out, this is one. The second, it sometimes gave a very big myth that coal is unfriendly. I must tell you, all world's economies, be it Australia, be it America, be it Germany, be it Russia, they, and be it UK, today they are big because of coal. And still they are getting richer and richer, only because of coal. If you see Australia, it's a coal economy. And number two is the iron ore economy. South Africa is a coal economy. Russia, again a coal economy. America, still a coal economy. America has not stopped their coal mines. They are extracting every day, exporting to anywhere in the world, wherever we want. We should not feel that coal is unfriendly. Uses may be unfriendly. We have to find the right technology to use the coal so that it is environmental friendly. And this is what we need to do. And this is how we have put up this plant in India. The next uses of this gas is coal to liquid. The coal to liquid means coal to diesel, coal to petrol, then coal to olefins, the last value chain in the plastic, plastic family. You can produce olefins from this coal at a very, very nominal cost. Fortunately, India is having enough and adequate coal for ice, whatever the data is available. I think with the same rate, if, even if we take out 2 billion ton coal every year, then we have at least for 300, 400 years of coal. So 300 years of coal we are sitting on and we are struggling for the natural resources like oils, hydrocarbons, fuels, and many more. What we are suggesting to government of India, and what we are suggesting to technocrats sitting here, what we are suggesting to the mining fraternity, that coal should not be treated as unfriendly. We can always discuss that what is the CO2 load, what is the CO2 emission, how can we reduce it? That's okay, that's fine. India itself is as an emerging economy, we are the least damager to the world. If you see the data, 
as per the data and statistics available, United States emits most of the CO2 in the world. And then followed by other developed countries. We are maybe at eight, number eight or number nine. So there is long, long way to go. And if you see per capita, with 130 crore people, 135 crore people, our, we are damaging the, the world or the environment the least, the least. Because we are in a country where we recycle everything, we reuse everything, we don't throw anything from our house. And we have, we have been taught years after years and years and generations after generation to preserve, to preserve and to consume less. So that is our nature. So what we are discussing today on this, this form is that gasification is a future. Honorable Prime Minister, I can share the clip, or you can see in the Google also, what Honorable Prime Minister spoke in United States on gasification. He's very keen. He has invited world technological companies to produce, to generate coal gasification in India at a environmental healthy uh, uh, process. Uh, this is very good. We also say yes, environment we must protect. So most of the companies will be responding. My view is that in times to come, this is the future. When the fossil fuel will not be available, the world economies cannot control the, the ocean fuel market. Then the, to become the self-reliant the countries like India, which are bestowed the best of the best quantity of coal will be getting benefit. This is not the responsibility of only government. This is everybody's responsibility. Sometimes we have to keep on speaking to government so that they start giving an ear to us. So what I'm telling here, that if we start speaking, then we'll start digging the technology. When we start digging the technology, we start learning on it. When we start learning on it, we get specialization of this. When we become specialist, then we speak on this. When we speak, the speech multiplies from 10 to 100, 100 to 1000, 1000 to millions. And then the decisions are taken. This is how it happens all over the world. Because you have to build the technological opinion. There will be so many pros and cons. There will be so many questions. All these questions are to be addressed. Then, who is responsible for this? One, as private sector people, as technocrats, as consultants, as business people, as financial uh, advisors, we should start thinking on this. One. Number two, we must try to listen to the technology suppliers. Number three, we must take the advantage I'm using the word of advantage, or we should, must take the lead from the Honorable Prime Minister's speech, which he has declared and he has invited the technological companies to come to India and to help India to produce gasification, but not damaging the environment. So I'm, I'm with him fully. So this is what is the total game plan. For just for a few more seconds, just for the economics I'm telling, as I told in my earlier speech also, when we can make X factory gate at 27 rupees per liter, we can make diesel. And same about 27 to 28 rupees, we can make petrol. And we can produce gas at 6.5 dollars per mm BTU as against of 12 or 14 dollars per mm BTU. Why should not we do it? This is one question. The second question, Second thought of mine is, the Reliance has put up a pet coke to gasifier and gasifier to power plant. It's already working. Flip, Conoco Flip has given this plant from, uh, from America and this plant is now running. The companies like Reliance, those who are in petrochemicals, if they have thought of it, that why not to utilize pet coke to produce power, that's a great thing. Then another factor, from syngas to SNG. SNG is, syngas is synthesis gas. Syngas to synthetic natural gas is a process which is widely, widely available in 
in China and also in South Africa. So we have to find out these technologies to come in. And we have to become little friendly with the coal. I'm not saying that we should damage the environment. We must use the technology which is environmental friendly and we can produce gas at half of the price or maybe 40% of the price or one third of the price of natural gas. Second point, we must also ponder upon that how many years of natural gas is available to reach to each and every house in the country. Again, we are dependent on imports, but God has given enough to us why we are importing. Next point, anywhere in any economy, this is my very uh, a strong point which I want to inform everybody. Today, the natural, natural resources given to us by God, everybody has a right on that. Be it water, be it coal, be it iron ore, be it any other minerals or anything. Of course, through the government policies and everything. Now, how can people or the citizen of this country get benefit out of this? I tell you, if we take coal today and we produce through thermal power plants, we produce power. We can produce power at 2 rupees per kilowatt hour. In the state of Odisha, in the state of Jharkhand, in the state of Bihar, in the state of Chhattisgarh, in the state of MP. Now this two rupees of power, when it travels to down south or in Punjab or in Rajasthan, for the industry it goes to rupees six per kilowatt hour or seven rupees per kilowatt hour, sometimes eight rupees, sometimes ten rupees per kilowatt hour. What, how can we share what is the methodology so that a cheapest power is available today we are thinking to produce 300 million ton steel and we also want to recycle the steel through the electric arc furnaces if the electric arc furnace we put in Rajasthan or in Haryana or in UP or in Maharashtra or in Tamil Nadu it will not be cost effective because the power cost be 8 rupees 9 rupees 10 rupees and we consume about 550 to 600 kilowatt hour per ton. So, you, you see the amount of money, 5 to 6,000 rupees will only go in power in steel making. Whereas the same steel, if you produce with a low cost of power, then it will be hardly 3 rupees, 3,000 rupees per, kilo, per, per ton of the steel making. This is where we have to reach and ultimately who gets the benefit? The common citizen gets the benefit. If today government wants to increase the power consumption, that per capita power consumption should increase. As against of 10,000 kilowatt hour per year, our power per capita is 800 kilowatt hour per year. If you want to bring it to 4,000 or 5,000 kilowatt hour per, per person per capita, that means we have to reduce the power tariff. Then only the economy will start moving, be it a EV vehicles, I mean for charging you need power, be it household gadgets, be it uh, refrigerators, washing machines, appliances or anything. So we need to have power at an affordable price. And this is where the world should move to. And for that the best is utilize the coal to power plants through the gasification route. If we produce, one, one more minute, if we produce power through gasification and through combined cycle we get 52% efficiency. But if we just use coal into power plants, we get only 35 to 36 percent efficiency through the tanking cycle. But if it is a gas turbine, then we get 52 percent efficiency. Means the same kilocalorie will produce 52 percent of efficiency than producing through the tanking cycle of burning coal in the boilers and using as a power plant. So there are so many benefits which we, we can discuss this topic throughout the day. It's a very interesting topic. But we have to find out. Everybody will have to find out. Everybody have to do is his or her own research at how can we utilize this coal gasification in the interest of mankind. This is what I wanted to tell today. Thank you.